Everton who have found Liverpool rather difficult to contain in the opening 17 minutes have sprung forward and Newell punishes the club where he wanted to make his living out of the game touched it the merest of touches past the advancing Grobola Beardsley problems again for Everton this time John Barnes and Everton surround the referee John Barnes has his first goal in a Merseyside derby and it did look on the cards Beardsley the cross and Barnes powered it in Beardsley here's Barnes no, he's got a problem again the cover is arriving but not quickly enough who's there you've guessed Ian Rush For the second half, it's Everton one, Liverpool two, and Rush is back to haunt them again. Beardsley, Rush again, surely not. It's Rush. It's unbelievable. to write a special history book about his own achievements in Merseyside derbies. Today it's two in two minutes. This time off the goalkeeper. But it's his goal. Kevin Wilson of Chelsea got the only goal today. That was against Coventry at Stamford Bridge and good enough to elevate Chelsea into second place behind Liverpool. Good jump by Anderson. A clear to Ince has been quiet so far. Right well. Morley was fouled off the ball by Beardsmore. Referees are going to have eyes in the back of the head on Derby Day. That's a great ball from Hinchcliffe. Here's David White again. Palace for a full stretch, missed it. Oldfield, 1 0. City in front. David Oldfield. Gary Palace to slip. Leighton beaten. City jubilant. And David Oldfield, whose last minute goal at Brentford in the week was so valuable, has scored an even more important one now. David White. Cut out by Enns, Donaghy in trouble, great chance from Morley, super save by Leighton, late maybe. United all over the place, Morley! It's 2-0, two goals in as many minutes. Trevor Morley's first goal since the one that clinched promotion at Bradford. Here's McClare. Gale. Pallister, Duxbury, the United have certainly fought back, Redmond in the way, not playing anything like as well as Alex Ferguson would want them to be, but they have a couple of goal line clearances to look back on the first half, but they've had continual problems at the back, Oldfield, oh, Bishop, 3-0, Ian Bishop's first goal for Manchester City, may have won the derby for them, already, what a dream. A scouser, Ian Bishop, still lives in Liverpool, has made his mark on the Manchester derby. Hughes. Beardsmore. Mischievous little player. 
Got to pick his moment to get the cross in. Now he's wrong footed Hinchcliffe. Hughes with the bicycle kick. It's there. Open last for Manchester United. And yet another brilliant goal by Mark Hughes. He doesn't score tappings, does he? Every time this man strikes, it's a goal to remember. Mike Duxbury. McClare. Danny Wallace. Got past White. Went past Fleming as if he wasn't there. Wallace. Good save by Paul Cooper. What a run by Wallace. He's naturally right footed. He prefers to play on the left because he loves to cut in like that. And once he's on course, he's difficult to stop. It was just a moment of when he would shoot. And Cooper had a good view of it. Paul Lane going forward, got a lucky bounce. Great chance for four. Lane did well. Lane, oh, four, four. City have their three goal lead back. And the Manchester United comeback is halted. Sharp challenge by Gale. Bishop to Morley. Bishop again. Great ball for David White from Ian Bishop. Early cross, chance of the far post, catch club. That's just marvellous stuff. It's a dream day for Manchester City. And that, a goal as good as Jim Lane has ever seen or been beaten by. Andy Hitchcliffe finished it off. The build up though was magnificent. What a cross by White. And where did Hitchcliffe come from? He's the left back, remember? Bang! It was a handball by Charlton's John Humphrey which led to three more points for Arsenal at Highbury and sent Charlton to a third consecutive 1-0 defeat in Division 1. And for Brian Marwood, a goal now in each of his last three league games. Marwood's successful penalty came after 53 minutes. Arsenal 1, Charlton 0. Well worked and a good ball and Lineker can he get it? Oh, that's a goal. Gascoigne bangs it in. But uh, noise giving them a little bit of space, perhaps too much as Lineker comes onto the near post. There he is. It's a brilliant goal from Lineker. Nice ball forward from Andy Townsend to Phillips. Phillips can cut in and shoot. Pulled one back with a magnificent goal. Forward for Rosario. Lovely touch to Fleck and the ball breaking well for Mark Bowen. This is looking good for Norwich. Bowen going forward and Fleck and Bowen. Bowen's goal. Trevor Francis was playing his first full game since January. The Queen's Park Rangers player manager aiming to add a bit of punch up front. Away to Aston Villa, for whom David Platt's fourth of the season got them off to a good start, previously unbeaten at home. Now, Rangers have gone four league games without a goal. Enter the maestro. Spink teeing it up. Francis driving, a little bit of draw, one all. Trevor's first since Boxing Day. Now, the hairline might be receding, but his predatory instincts appear to be unimpaired. Maybe, well, just maybe, the long spells he's been out of the game down the years have actually reduced the amount of wear and tear that strikers normally suffer. Or maybe it's more simple than that. But simply, there's no substitute for class. George Best once did that for Manchester United against Spurs. It was said to be the mark of true genius. There can be no greater compliment. The boss is back. His old club, Nottingham Forest, their stuttering start continued at Crystal Palace. Forest with only one win and six points from seven games and beaten by Ian Wright's fourth goal of the season. Eddie McGoldrick's cross and Wright plunging in to score the winner. There were just six minutes left.
Derby against Southampton. Just 13,000 at the baseball ground, a reflection of the way things have been going there, which is basically from bad to worse. Southampton's second away win of the season, Rod Wallace deserved the goal, though it was debited to Rob Hindmarsh. Luton Town's defence has been their strong point, so it was something of a surprise when they lost the goal to Wimbledon after 28 minutes, nipping in Detsi Kruzinski, wearing the number four shirt, Vinnie Jones left behind. Luton later had Mick Kennedy sent off. That came after an equalising penalty. John Fashionu with a forwards lunge in defenders' territory. Roy Wegerley the victim. And when a retake was required, Wegerley also became the scorer. Millward lost their previous two games, but they're a different proposition at the Den. Sheffield Wednesday, well, we know all about them. No points, no goals on their travel so far. They held out for 65 minutes before Jimmy Carter struck first. A beauty. Number two came from a corner. Not a particularly intricate one, but it was too complicated for Wednesday to defend against. Tony Cascarino's inch-perfect header.